It's filling and chilling. What do we want to talk about today? I guess I kind of want to talk about like YouTube in general. My personal shift in what I watch for entertainment. I used to be really big into movies and like shows and whatnot. And then as everyone knows, the decline of what's actually really out there, what's new, what's worth watching, there's very little. So I have pretty much next to no interests in anything that's modern day. I guess I could re-watch old things that I've already seen, but that honestly doesn't really interest me anymore either. I don't want to get involved in something that's going to be very time-consuming. And other than entertainment, I'm probably not really going to get much else out of it. And I'm just like thinking, go physically, me physically going to a movie theater just never is going to cross my mind probably ever again. I'm not your financial guy again, as I was talking in the previous video, the cost difference in PCPs and... Yeah, they might be expensive and whatnot initially, but it's no different than firearms or any other sport. You're going to be spending tons of money on... I mean, you do have options with everything. You always got lower-end bills you can do on things and whatnot. People can get away with pretty much anything. You don't have to get the best the best. But this isn't about that. This is just about time. And time is money. So let me just give you my perspective on how I evaluate things now. Like for, say, if I went to a movie. Well, I'm going to have to be there early or else I'm going to show up late for the movie. So I have to actually, I actually have to plan this out and be ready on time, out the door. The movie theater could be 20, 30 minutes away. So the back and forth just travel time is going to be an hour. And then there's the vehicle to get there, the gas and whatnot. Then you're including the entire time to get there, the concession stand area, waiting for the movie, watching the entire movie, and then going home. So that could be three to four hours, which to me, I'm looking at that as percentage of my day. So one-sixth of my day is spent to watching a movie, which in the end... I may or may not even have enjoyed. And that's the one thing that really... Like, I don't mind watching something I would enjoy, but it's the fact that I'm going in there, and it's a friggin' gamble. And with the stuff that's out there today, it is... It, it's more than a gamble. It's like... I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to equate it, but it's just... You're taking a risk on something, and my time, to me, is worth way more than that risk. So I pretty much gave up on movies, shows. I would rather watch independent people on YouTube get perspective into how they operate, understand where they're coming from, and actually like just be entertained, form some sort of bond with the person, I guess. What's the word for it? I'll have to think of the word later. But that's what I have when I watch... YouTube videos I like just kind of form a bond, but you get to know the person and uh, as well as movies and, and, and shows This includes sports for me, too. I'd rather watch Someone I know play a sport really well rather than someone. I'm never going to meet I'm never gonna have any interaction with them and My valuation of sports is so bizarre now like I don't think I would ever watch a football game again. I just, I don't know. I just don't care anymore. Because I can spend three or four hours doing something else. And yes, I guess I could do the same thing I'm doing now, because every time I'm doing something, I'm basically multitasking. Like, I'm filling ammo. But at the same time, I'm filming a video. So I'm trying to get something else out of something while I'm doing it. If I'm editing video, I'm probably watching YouTube at the same time. If there's anything I can do to get extra out of my time, I'm going to be doing it. And yes, I understand that there are situations where you need rest and relaxation, and you can get that in whatever form you like, but for me, my, my form's changing. I used to just sit around and watch TV, do whatever, relax, drink, whatever. And it's just like, I can't sit idle. I just can't do it anymore. I have to extract as much as I can 
out of time. And time is the most valuable resource on the planet. Money comes second to time in the means of forming things. Like you can't build, I can't build a house without money. You need money and you also need time to do it. I guess technically I could do it. Well, no, I would need the land to harvest the lumber. So technically I still need money. They go hand in hand though. So time is money. So me looking at that movie, going to a theater for my enjoyment, and it doesn't matter how much money you make. It's all relative to everyone. If you made $15 an hour, if I look at that movie and I go, oh, I just spent two hours watching this. Another hour there and back and then maybe 10, 20 minutes waiting or something. So I spent three and a half hours. And if I was working... That would be like fifty-two and a half dollars at fifteen dollars an hour. So I just spent, I spent fifteen dollars, and then I also wasted fifty-two and a half. So that cost me not fifteen, but it cost me sixty-seven and a half dollars for one movie. That's how I see it. Versus, oh, you know what I can do? I want to go shooting. But, on top of that, I'm going to film me shooting. And on top of that, I can't speak for crap on camera. If you go back to my other videos, it's horrendous. I'm also getting better at talking. I've, I've, I'm have i hypercritical on all my edits if I say words too often. I'm still working on it. It's a work in progress. But I purposely avoid words now or re repetition of words. When I'm reviewing these sometimes, it's pretty much someone's poking you and someone's poking you and it's annoying but you can deal with it but then gradually it just gets more and more and you're like i have to do something about this it's so small on the scale of things to worry about but just imagine every video opens up all right guys all right all right all right all right so <laughs> If I say all right, you bet your ass it's getting clipped out of the video now. <laughs> all right, guys. So you'll see my uh, my videos will be like, I just did it again, like 357 Rattler. We're taking out the 357 Rattler. 357 Rattler. If I keep saying 357 Rattler again, it's the same thing. I'll have to change that up. But I got to add in some, some variance to it. So that's always good, too. So... Talking, I'm learning on, I'm improving on. My channel, I'm improving on at the same time. This channel just came out of nowhere, pretty much. Less than a year now, and here we are. My long-form videos need some work. I have to still grasp, grab people's attention better. I'm trying to make things shorter, edit things out, trim things down, whatnot. Have actually something interesting to, to, to listen to, I guess. That would help. Thumbnails are very important. If there's anyone, I wouldn't know how to do this, but if anyone wanted to help make thumbnails for me, it would be kind of hard given the time frame. But that would be pretty awesome. And I'm just thinking of other people. If they need money, you don't really need, like, a full-time... Well, everyone knows side hustles. This is a side hustle now. Not that I'm still promoting it as anything other than... It's just going to be, you know, fun. Whatever I do. If I make money doing it, that's just a bonus. But I'm never going to, like, orient this thing around, you know, purposely being to make money in other than just fun or a hobby or something. I feel like that would detract. Maybe one day I'll, I'll do, like, an ad read or something. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like every time someone does an ad read, I pay for YouTube so I don't get ads. But when the people do like an in-person ad read, it just it like triggers me. Something about ads and getting away from them, because I don't watch TV anymore. I barely even watch streaming services. But man, there's nothing like getting focused on something and then an ad comes through and just destroys the flow of things. I mean, ads are great when you, like, had to get out and take a piss or something. But, I hate being interrupted, like, 
what I'm viewing. I hate hate being focused on something and then another thing that I give no care in the world about is going to pop up. And it's funny cuz even if I did give a shit about what it was, they pretty much put themselves in a list to not have me care about them and probably look somewhere else. Right? Does anyone else get that too? You purposely go out of your way just to avoid it now because they irked you a little bit. Kind of like a out of spite kind of thing. It's like, you guys just interrupted me. Why? I know your company exists. You having a Coca-Cola ad isn't going to make me go out and buy Coca-Cola. I think we all know it exists. Thank you. Yeah, so side hustles and whatnot. This... YouTube for me right now is pretty much an idle game. And if you don't know what an idle game is, just think of automation. So, if I go and make a YouTube video, I post it. I come back. It gets interacted with. I'm not there. I can come back to it and interact with those who interacted with it. But it's doing its thing. It's just automation pretty much. If I have a factory... And all I have to do is unload ingredients, load the ingredients, and then pack them or whatever at the end. If it's doing all the other work for me, uh, yeah, that's a hell of a bonus. Because what does it do for me? It saves me a lot of time. I don't have to do anything else really other than put some effort into what I'm doing. If people come and interact, then I'm going to put my effort into interacting with them. If you see any of my videos, you're going to see pretty much 99.9% .9 of every comment has a response from me. Or a like or something. So, I'm basically just using YouTube as a social media at this point. And just think of it no different than Facebook. I'm just like, hey, I'm posting videos. That's, that's all I'm doing. If you want to come along for the ride, then then join me. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> so to recap, once I get a new box, I'd much rather watch independent people. I'd much rather form some sort of bond with the person, interact with them, Get to know them a little bit better. And I don't want to be a champ. I'm not, I'm not, the worst thing I can see happening is like, why would I want to become a channel that's so big or allow myself... Like, I would never want someone else commenting. It would have to be me. That would just seem like the most disingenuous thing to me. Having like a PR team. Like... There's no point. I will dedicate time to responding to people if it comes down to it. Because sometimes, like, if I wake up in the morning, especially if something's blowing up, I could have 50 to 100 comments every single day. And they're not just, oh, hey, that's cool. Some of them are, but a lot of them are questions and like i said before i want to get people into air guns and whatnot it's kind of like a little mission of mine i have multiple missions that's a goal and even if you're uh, here's speaking of missions in youtube my mission set goals because you can just i start off with a hundred and like nine hundred and sixteen subscribers or something and let me just be clear right now. The subscriber count doesn't really matter. But I started out with that, and I set goals. I'm like, all right, I want to get to 500. I get to 500. I want to get to 1,000. I get to 1,000. And it's not like for my own ego to stroke. It's like, <laughs> I'm not arrogant in the least bit. The last thing you would ever want to do around me is be arrogant. No one likes an arrogant person. I'd rather be underestimated 100% of the time, show up with a friggin' Red Rider BB gun and someone's laughing in my face... And then I smoke them when they have a rifled barrel. Not like that's going to happen, but that would be funny. You get the point. And I want to get people out there. I want to push people. I want to unlock people. People have the potential to do pretty much anything they desire, as long as they're willing to work and put the time into it.
There's so many people who want to do YouTube. Guess what? Do it. Start with a cell phone. Watch other people see what they're doing. Imitate them. Don't completely copy what they're doing, but learn from them. Adapt from it. You like the style that someone else is doing? I would find that flattering. As long as you wouldn't, like, abuse it. And, you know, you're not using it to promote 100% of the things you do as someone else's signature thing that they do. That would be ridiculous. But you start adding in some flair from other people. You see what you like? You add it in. Little touches. Maybe you give them credit. Give them a shout-out, whatever. Like, every time I do a challenge, I shout-out everyone I do a challenge. Everyone mentions something to me. If I... If I if anyone mentions anything to me, and I think, okay, maybe I'll try that out. You're going to get a shout-out once I do it. Because I want to give credit to someone. And if it gives them a boost, which, like I, I've said, my long-form stuff really isn't picking up. My live stream, whatever, isn't picking up. I'm still going to do it. I just want to get people out there. They, they see people doing things, and they are capable of doing them. They just have to get used to it. You have to get involved. You have to get familiar. Getting people involved with this... They have to get familiar. They have to see things in a different perspective. They just... I feel like so many people are locked into some preconceived notion and they can't get out of it. If you like firearms, don't disregard air guns. You're just kicking yourself in the ass. And the thing, it's the same thing with like cars. It blows my mind that we get these fanboys for a company... It's like, oh, I love Chevy. Ford sucks. What stake do you have in these companies to have such an opinion on them? You have no part in them. You just like something like, like that. But maybe there's something on the other end of the spectrum, but you have those preconceived notions and you won't even give it a chance. I don't know how many people laugh at me for having these air guns. You could get this. You could get that. Okay, why can't I get both? It's expensive on both ends. You can get really cheap things on both sides. Enjoy them. Why limit yourself? And you know what? Don't listen to anyone else trying to limit yourself. Unless it's like trying to talk you out of something doing really, you know, something that's going to be dangerous or, you know, you haven't really put your thought enough thought into that's going to be, you know, like going to school or something. You don't just go and, oh, I'm going to pay $100,000 and go to this school because... I like the name it has. I like the dorm room. That would be pretty stupid to make a decision like that for those reasons. What's your reason for not liking air guns? I would love to know. I'd love to know. Because I'm going to come back and I'm going to have an argument video countering your point. Because if you don't like it because it's expensive, this is $1,200. You know how many guns cost more than $1,200? You don't have to look far. I mean, if you're worried about price, start off with a Gauntlet 2. $460. Pretty much the same price as a Ruger 22. Start off with that. Come back to me. You need a way to fill? Get the package. Come back to me. For the price and the compressor, under 1000 bucks. Then you're off on your own way, doing whatever you want. You get your Zeus later on. Wow, I can shoot my Zeus in my backyard. I don't have to worry about any firearm regulations. That could be you. I guess that's it for now. Enough ranting. See ya.